a very important issue because, Chair, if the, the nominee is uh, approved, now this is one of the ministry that is going to have the highest interaction with Parliament because of the budget budget making process, and I had asked that question but was not answered because of Article 221. And the article says, uh, nominee, and this is the same thing that was reminded your predecessors. Rotic, when he came for vetting, he said he's going to engage. This is the, the, the longest serving chairman of budget committee now is the majority leader. This has been, uh, this has been the biggest problem between parliament and treasury, and it has not been resolved. So I want to put it to you whether you will be the one, if you are not, uh, approved, you are the one who will resolve it. It says the National Assembly shall consider the estimate submitted under clause one, together with the estimate submitted by the Parliamentary Service Commission, the Chief Registrar of the Judiciary, under Article 127 and 173. And four, before the National Assembly considers the estimates of the, of the revenue expenditure, a committee of the Assembly shall discuss and review the estimate and review, shall discuss and review, review the estimates and make recommendations not to Treasury, but to the Assembly. Now, what happens normally? Treasury, they go and make their budget estimate and bring it to Parliament. And they want to force Parliament to pass the estimate as they have brought it. And if you don't do it, they, they go and tell the President. And the President summons the budget committee and tells them, this is my budget. But the Constitution says the, the National Assembly should review and submit it to the Assembly. It is the, if, if they are think that needs to be changed, then the Assembly will discuss it with the Budget Committee, and then at the floor of the House they can agree. Yes, majority. Chair, with your indulgence, no, no, maybe no, no. just, just to put in better context what the Honourable Junati is saying, uh, uh, CS nominee. Parliament indeed uh, considers what Junet is saying in line with the Constitution through the BPS. But the main challenge has been uh, uh, deviation from what is passed on as a budget policy statement, because it also includes estimates and ceilings. When you table your annual estimates, it is completely different from what was passed as a budget policy statement. So maybe just to paraphrase what Junet is asking, are you going to commit that what then is agreed on as a budget policy statement, because that is what you commit to, and that is what the House passes, that then you will ensure that your annual estimates are in line with that budget policy statement. And it goes along with you as a nominee into ensuring that you stick to what you intend to do. Because again, the other biggest pro big problem we've had is the abuse of Article 223 of the Constitution. And, and I have engaged you in another fora, and you know where the current National Treasury, CS, has committed close to 200 billion shillings over and above what has been approved by Parliament without approval of Parliament. Therefore, uh, maybe I should also add that as a question. Are you also committing that in case you are approved, we shall see to an end, an end to the abuse of Article 223? Because it is reserved for things that are of emergency in nature. Uh, not to pay for land like the Ruaraka land scandal, uh, maybe for information, the Ruaraka land scandal emanated from Article 223, something that was done especially around this time when there, there are no committees of parliament yet set up just before an election or immediately after an election. Uh, are we going to see a net to that abuse of Article 223? Thank you, thank you, Chair, and thank you, Honorable Members, and thank you very much, Mohesh uh, Majunet. Uh, Let me say this. History is very, very important because we are told that if you forget your history, you'll be condemned to repeat it. And I'm guided about what has happened in the past and how we can actually have a good start in terms of clarity of issues and also clarity of regulations that are set. I do believe, and I come from that private sector background and that uh, thinking that uh, once the government sets the right guideline, it gives the private sector periods of policy clarity. And that is what you are really asking for because once the budget is done in the wrong way, 
then it affects also the, uh, the, 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 the projections by the private sector. But I, assume I, I can see, and you know that, we had sleepless nights in our, in our technical committee when we realized the whole of 200 billion, which actually cannot be justified. The whole thing is that it is history that is going to teach us the lesson. We have government led by His Excellency President William Ruto, which is actually saying, look, we have to follow the law. We have to follow the guidelines that we create. And we have to make sure that at the end of the period, we are evaluated on the basis of that. And I think uh, those are the issues that I will follow with the strictness. Uh, Jeanette, uh, Mohashmiwa Jeanette and Mohashmiwa Ishumu. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. We shall end here.